I'm happy to be here with you today for NGA's fourth National Summit on State Cybersecurity. I want to thank Governor Edwards, Governor Hutchison for their leadership with the NGA's Resource Center for State Cybersecurity and the NGA staff for all their hard work throughout the year. My name is Amit Uran and I'm the Chairman and CEO of Tenable. We're focused on transforming the cybersecurity industry by providing organizations with unmatched breadth and visibility and depth of analytics to measure and communicate cyber risk and to enable them to make more strategic decisions. Our goal is to eliminate blind spots, prioritize threats and, and reduce exposure and loss across the entire attack surface. Tenable empowers more than 30,000 organizations of all sizes, from small startups to more than 50% of the Fortune 500, from DOD and DHS and some of the largest federal departments and agencies, all the way through many of our state and local government customers to understand, predict, and reduce their cyber risk. I'm excited to be here virtually speaking with you about some of the challenges and threats facing us and share my thoughts on steps we can all take to address cyber risk. The cyber threats we face today are greater in scope and scale than a decade ago. Across the country, government agencies, businesses, consumers are all connecting on the internet more than ever before, utilizing traditional IT, internet of things, and OT, operational technologies, while also accelerating the adoption of cloud computing. These technologies power the digital economy, they optimize production, they drive innovation, and they increase sustainability. However, they also increase the overall cybersecurity attack surface. According to the, a global industry study, 94% of organizations experienced a business impacting cyber attack in the last 12 months. The loss of literally hundreds of millions of dollars in damage to global economic capacities through incidents like WannaCry and NotPetya should be a call to action for organizations, governments, and enterprises to secure cyberspace. When looking at some of today's most serious threats, we can't overlook critical infrastructure with operational technologies. OT extends far beyond manufacturing, energy, and utility sectors. These systems now power the modern economy and are leveraged by a wide range of industries from financial institutions to retail, to pharmaceuticals and defense. Especially in moments of crisis like COVID-19, OT literally keeps our country running from manufacturing of critical PPE to maintaining our supply chains. Our dependence on OT means a successful attack on these mission and safety critical systems can have a material effect on organizations' wide ability to conduct operations. From information leakage to equipment damage, safety concerns for employees, or even a major environmental incident. Now, unfortunately, many organizations often have a knee-jerk reaction to new threats where they'll spend limited cycle budgets on flashy silver bullet-like solutions that aren't actually needed to prevent attacks. There's nothing more harmful to our actual security than hype, smoke and mirrors that currently characterizes our cybersecurity ecosystem. Everywhere you look, the cybersecurity in industry is pushing fear. The industry by and large feeds off of fear mongering, pushing shiny tools that don't work if we're not doing the basics. Before anything else, Organizations need a clear picture of their converged IT and OT environments, the threats these environments face, and where and how they're exposed and how they could impact organizations. Everything else is secondary. While these threats are very real, the fact of the matter is you are responsible for the state of your cybersecurity. If you read the papers about global cybersecurity, you'd be right to, to walk away with a feeling that there's nothing you can do to protect yourself, your state, your agency, your data, your very identity from the cyber bad guys. The recent solar winds breach has made headlines for weeks and rightfully so. The impact of this compromise has been widespread and frankly painful. 
you're probably even hit with questions you're asking yourself. Are we exposed to? What is our level of cyber risk? And while these headlines can certainly be startling, don't let them paralyze you. They aren't an excuse to throw up your hands in the air and give up. They aren't a reason to ignore the basic blocking and tackling of cybersecurity. Because while sophisticated novel attacks like solar winds do happen, they don't represent a vast majority of the threats your organization face or a vast majority of the breaches which cause harm. Those are caused by low hanging fruit. The truth is that while these headlines might make you feel otherwise, you are not helpless. You're suffering from learned helplessness. What it takes to protect yourself in cyberspace is not some revolutionary new approach. There's not some aha moment that's about to grab, grab you. As with many things in life, be it work, sports, or academics, it comes down to doing hard work. And it isn't necessarily incredibly difficult work. It's just work, a lot of it. But remember, you're responsible and accountable for the state of your cybersecurity, and you can have a massive, massive impact. We've all had a false narrative in cyber, and that's hugely damaging. We can do better. We're so busy chasing these headlines, the zero days, the nation states, that we're not doing the basic. And that's what's tripping us up. According to a 2019 study based on 3,000 security professionals, 60% of all breaches simply involved an unpatched vulnerability. And 62% of security professionals were aware that the organizations were vulnerable prior to that breach. In reality, it's cheaper, easier, and less risky for adversaries, including our nation state adversaries, to use known unpatched vulnerabilities than burning zero days attacking us with some form of sexy technique. Most successful attacks, in truth, aren't all that advanced. They are, however, persistent. Let's get back to the basics. Great cybersecurity, near perfect cybersecurity is really hard to do. But really good cybersecurity is actually not that difficult to achieve. It requires basic cyber hygiene. That's not very sexy, but it works. That means hygiene of your users, implement multi-factor authentication, implement least privilege, implement privilege access management solutions. These types of things can help prevent spear phishing from being successful. And the hygiene of our systems, applying the patches, applying very tight configuration management to your systems. Again, this is difficult to do, but can have a massive impact on the state of your cybersecurity. And if you're getting the basics right, you're preventing a vast supermajority of the breaches and attacks on your organization from being successful, regardless of who's behind them. CISA Cyber Essentials Toolkits are a great resource to help nail the basics. They outline basic security steps and steps that organizational leaders can take toward fully implementation of strong cybersecurity. Unfortunately, despite these recommendations and cyber essentials to keep cyber, software and hardware up to date, many high-risk vulnerabilities remain unpatched for months and in many cases, years after they're disclosed. NSA said that 93% of incidents dealt with an agency where that incident could have been prevented if best practices had been implemented, like applying patches and tightening the configuration of your systems. Just a few months ago, CISA and the FBI issued a joint advisory cautioning that advanced threat groups are chaining known vulnerabilities and unpatched systems together to gain entry into government networks and elevate privileges. Again, patch your systems, maintain tight control, and maintain a tight control and good hygiene for your user accounts. Organizations can greatly reduce their overall cyber exposure and mission risk by getting back to basics. We know a coordinated effort within an organization to improve its cyber posture has great impact and reduces risk. Improved coordination between critical infrastructures, DHS, CISA, is essential to improving cyber posture 
in every company, organization, and industry that we rely on, there will be challenges to breaking down these silos and also bringing different organizations together. But still, the benefits for everyone are significant, and we should make this a top priority with our industry partners. In order to tackle the cybersecurity threats of yesterday and tomorrow, we need enhanced coordination and collaboration to improve our cybersecurity posture. Here are key areas we support and have focused on. The creation of a national cyber director. This is a critical step forward to improved coordination in the creation of the office of the national cyber director within the executive office of the president. I'm happy to see the nonpartisan legislation recently enacted into law as part of the National Defense Authorization Act. A whole of nation risk requires a whole of nation response. And indeed, our new expanded attack surface stretches across the entire nation. This includes every aspect of government as well as private industry. Focus on a whole of state approach. I also agree with the summit's focus on a whole of state approach to cybersecurity. This team approach brings IT departments together with other state level departments, local jurisdictions, private sector partners to enhance communications and efficiency that would not only make available better capability than exists in siloed environments. The move toward collaboration is being driven by the realization that all levels of government are facing common threats and that a more coordinated response to these threats improves our effectiveness and efficiency. It also introduces an increased level of flexibility and sharing of resources to focus on the most imminent threats, regardless of the specific agency being targeted. This whole of state approach is made even more important because we're in an environment that demands quick and effective responses, regardless of physical location. We're seeing this approach take root across the nation in states like Texas, Louisiana, Virginia, North Carolina, in North Dakota. It's also been recognized by the federal government. The recently enacted National Defense Authorization Act provides each state with a federally funded cybersecurity coordinator. The state coordinator will be responsible for preventing and responding to cybersecurity threats in the state and would work with federal, state, and local governments as well as schools, hospitals, and other entities. Cybersecurity funding. As you all know too well, local and tribal governments and state governments are on the front lines of the fight for cybersecurity. They're barraged by nation states and cyber criminals trying to steal data, shut down critical services, and charge ransom to release systems. States need additional funding for cybersecurity to prevent and defend against these attacks and establish cultures where cybersecurity is prioritized as a requirement for operations. Tenable has been advocating for legislation that creates a new federal cybersecurity grant program for states. We're going to try continuing to push for this legislation and are hopeful that it gets across the finish line this year. States can also enact legislation that requires state and local agencies to adhere to cybersecurity hygiene standards and best practices. We've partnered with the Center for Internet Security to ensure our solutions meet their standards and best practices in regards to their controls assessment specification and top 20 CIS controls. Additionally, I've instructed my team to make our solutions even more affordable to state and local government communities through the CIS cyber marketplace. We're all working hard to address today's cybersecurity threats, but our adversaries aren't letting up either. We have to do the same. It's time to take ownership in and accountability of our cybersecurity programs. We must feel empowered to rid ourselves of this learned helplessness and get back to basics and make sure that we're aligning with our organization's capabilities and our mission priorities. The work may not be easy to do, but the steps that we take today will have significant impact on our future cybersecurity posture, the cybersecurity posture of our nation, and our critical infrastructures and society. Thank you for your efforts and I look forward to working with you to help secure our nation's cyberspace.